that going. Well, let's just move on right to the end game. So now you got it all messed up, right? And the end game is it's a piece of that. The end game is, is where your plan comes into in play. It, it's been going, and you've had your plan, you've been executing it, you've gotten attacked, you've attacked a little back and forth. But now the whole point of, of the end game is just get that key. Promote a pawn and get the key. And I'll explain promoting a pawn in a little bit. Over there. We're on the end game. What's that? We're on the end game section. Okay. So the end game is not really a lot of this the first process. Yeah. Pieces left. But the pieces you do have at the end game all are weapons now. If you were only focusing, in the middle game, you were only focusing on your focal points and your attacks, your tricks and stuff, you know, try to mislead and confuse. But don't get confused yourself, right? So now you're in the end game, and you only have a certain amount. Say you don't have the queen anymore. Take the queens out. They got lost, right? You traded them. All your pieces are, are really powerful in the end. You know, most most people who they play at the end game, they neglect their pawns. And most people neglect them throughout the whole game. So you don't want to neglect your pawns because you want a pawn from them. And a, and a good, way, uh, good example of this is, say you got your pawn, or your, your enemy pawn, your enemy's got a queen, what we call it, you know, you're going to promote. So say this is an end game. Uh, my, my, so you got a, a pawn on c3. So when you promote a piece, if you get a pawn, one of your pawns, from your starting line to your starting rank, to the very last rank, your opponent's first rank, you can promote a pawn to any piece except for a king. And you can do this as many times as you can get a pawn up there. Right? So, so you can have that. So black moves. Get to down, uh, whatever. So we move that. And then he moves again, and now he's promoted. Right? So he gets a free queen, and it's a uh, checking. That would never happen. <laughs> he's already very good. <laughs> but that, that's, but it could have been, it could have been that, or it could have been another, another rook. You can have four or five rooks on there if you can do it. You know, it just depends if, if you can, if your opponent will let you promote. So that's a pretty basic concept. You want to stay off the enemy squares. This goes for the opening, middle, and and you always want to stay off your enemy squares. Um, you always want to try to look where all the threats are. If someone's threatening you, you know you know where the pieces move. Everyone knows where the pieces are. You want to make sure you don't move into those squares. And, oh, another important thing about castling, you can't castle through, through a threat. So, so I'm going to go back real fast to that. So he has his bishop right here, and it's blocking my path. I can't castle because he's, he's in the way, right? This was just going back to earlier, because I forgot to cover this. Also, you, if you move your king once, you can't castle anymore. Those are just little, little things. It's all in the big. I just want to make sure you got it down. Um, also, don't give up. Like in the end game, like if you are losing, you're not really losing because you can always try to draw off the game. And you learn more by playing longer, especially playing against good people. Like you know, he's much stronger than I am, and like his rating. You want get everybody else? Don't yeah, <laughs> yeah. But you know, I I, I learn stuff <laughs> from playing him and. You know, I, I take I take pride in knowing that I almost beat him. And I just gotta I just gotta see where I, I faltered and it helps that he tells me where I faltered and then we can talk about it. So it's good to talk to each other about where you think the game just kind of fell apart, you know. 
that's what I do. Like if I'm beating someone, I tell them, well, after the game, if you, if you wouldn't have done this, you would have had a chance. It's just common mistakes. So it's good to talk to each other about that. But don't give up. If you're, if you're being chased down, you got a way to draw the game out by, by repetition. Either you have no more pieces you know, left on the board. <laughs> so, uh, hey, whatever, you know. That's just kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> he's got to, he's got to promote it anyway. So let's take all these out, out of the way. And um, let's just focus on this side of the board. It's a lot easier. So say, it, it, say these are the only pieces left on the board. Okay. The knife and, 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 and the Don't king. Worry king. You had no pieces left. You're just king right there. Lonely king. And, and, and it's his turn. You know, he can't. He can't check. He can't check you, and he can't make you with just that. But he need the king, right? So in the end game, your king becomes a weapon. Your king has to come out. If you ever get in this situation, and you know, don't give up. You got to fight it. And especially if you're chasing someone down. No matter what pieces you have. You know, like like a, a knight, knight king or a bishop king or a rook king or a queen king, and you're gonna win. You can do, you can win with all the pieces, but if you get stuck where you're doing repetitious moves, you cannot win with a knight or one bishop, two knights or one bishop. Right, they have to be in combinations. Right? You know, if you have just two knights and nothing else, uh -huh. you can't win. Okay, see, okay, even with the king, right? Yeah, with the king. Right, so you can draw up the game by doing three repetitious moves. So if the same move happens three times, back and forth, then it's draw. That's why you keep your score sheet, because sometimes it makes you prove mm -hmm. that you did it three times. Yeah, that, that's another thing. Um, chess notation, we can go over that go over that later. Sometime when we're all just playing, you can just ask anybody. Uh, you can ask me, Mike, here, and we can show you how to notate games. And that way you can read your own games. You can read them out of the Los Angeles Times, because every Sunday they have chess puzzles. You can play over the puzzles, or you can play over the games too. So that's really cool. But you can draw the game out, so don't run. Don't run. Don't don't tip your king over. You know, keep fighting for it. You can definitely do that. Uh, I think I pretty much covered everything. You don't want to double up your pawns. This is all in game. You you don't want to have your pawns doubled up like that. Try to avoid that. You know, they're not. It's not healthy. It, it, it makes uh, makes your promotion hard too. You know, so you, you don't want the, the, the square in front of the pawns. Yeah. For, we, for the enemy to put a knight there or a bishop there or whatever. Yeah. And you're only you're only covering those, and you, you got the whole file right all blocked up. So it's a good strategy to try to draw your <coughs> opponent's pawns to line up like that. Sure. By well, tempting yeah. them, throwing. Yeah, of course. Bait. Any advantage that, that you can think of, trickery and confusion, all all goes in chess. It's a vicious game. Yeah. <laughs> so you want to try to you want to try to do anything and everything you can to uh, try to fool or trick the opponent or straight out just just out them. It's a it's a baking game, you know. So so recommended reading for end game because uh, for mating you want to learn how to mate. You know, you want to pick up like Capablanca. Right? It's all in the sheets. You want to just study those games. He has 60 of his best games. You can, and he goes straight to the point, to the end games, and he shows you all the mating combinations in that one book. You can do that book or just get a common uh, mate book. And you can learn how to mate. Most puzzle books are all mating puzzles on, on a chessboard. That's the best way to play them. In the coffee in the morning or something. I don't know. <laughs> uh, that pretty much covers it. So all through that, all through that whole entire phase, all three phases, you want to keep your plan going. When you start running, you want to start defending, but still keep your plan going. Because okay? you can't win if you just defend. You turtle and turtle and everything. Eventually, you know, it's going to break down. Unless you're a defending player, super defending player, and you're really good at it. You know, but other than that, that's it. It's pretty much, it's pretty much the basics of chess. So with that, you get a good understanding, a good solid defense. And where you go from here is, is up to you. Try not to memorize everything and just get the basic concepts of things.
and you'll be fine. Mm -hmm. Try to fool people. Mm -hmm. That's your So thank you for coming. Ooh. Ooh. Thank you, Mike. Many explosions. <laughs> You're awesome. Is there any questions? No, it's bad sportsmanship. <laughs> that's, a, that's, a good, that's a good question, though. You know, it's poor sportsmanship, right? I don't think anybody in this room does that. You really want to make that move? Yeah, no. That's just, that's just or just look. Kick down the club after a while if you keep doing that. But yeah, that's, that's not good. No one likes a jerk. It's mutual. It's better just to be good like this guy and just beat you and get a I'm sorry. <laughs> Yes. Then you don't even say sorry. Yeah, you know. It's worse than that. Just shake your head and look you right in the eye like, yeah, I'm going to say sorry. No, don't, 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 don't ever say sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't ever say sorry. Don't ever say sorry. Play some chess. Right. Try to put your concepts to work now. That's the best thing.